For today's project, I'm going to build this oval table with some abstract shelves and sculpted legs. I did the typical process of milling the lumber, but when it came to the glue up, I decided not to use dominoes for alignment as I usually do. Since I'm cutting an oval and some abstract shapes out of the stock, I didn't want to risk cutting into the dominoes and having them showing on the edges. So I cut some calls and covered them with packing tape to prevent the glue from sticking to them, and then used them to keep the panels flat during glue up. I spaced my clamps off the top of the workbench with some scrap wood so I'd have room for the clamps to slide under the material when clamping the calls down. After all the panels were glued up, I made a quick shop made oval cutting jig and double stick taped it to the center of my workpiece. I'm not enough of a mathematician to tell you exactly how it works, but the basic gist of it is there are two pivot points that slide back and forth in the jig. One pivot point controls how long the oval is, the other controls how wide it is. I did several shallow passes until I'd cut all the way through. The lower shelves are going to reach a little past halfway across the table, so I glued up two shorter blanks and traced half of the oval shape on them. Then I headed over to the bandsaw to rough them out, being sure I left the line to clean up later. Then I used some double stick tape to tape the top to the lower shelf. Then with a bearing bit in the router table, I cleaned up one side of the shelf to match the top. Then I repeated the process for the bottom shelf. Where the oval shape ended and the abstract portion began, I used the disc sander to blend the two shapes together. Then it was time to finalize the abstract shape of the lower shelves. I just started drawing what I thought was a nice gentle curve and kept refining it until I was happy with the shape. My daughter said it kind of looked like Squidward's head from SpongeBob SquarePants. So with her approval, I headed on over to the bandsaw to cut out Squidward's head. I cleaned up the marks left over from the bandsaw at the spindle sander and then used more double stick tape and headed over to the router table to make a copy for the lower shelf. Now it's time to design the legs. I thought I was being clever by using the arch of the oval to create the arch of the leg, but after I drew it, I decided it was a terrible look. Too many steep curves coming together. So I went back to drawing out a few different variations. I decided to have the leg straight and just have the top section of the leg curve. Then I decided to bevel back the top of the leg, much like the shape of a flower from a calla lily. Since the lower part of the leg is straight, I marked out a stopping point on the fence of the table saw and where the curve started on my template. I made the cut, stopping when the two lines met and shut the saw off so I could safely remove the piece. Then I finished the curve at the bandsaw. I'm going to use this template at the router table to cut out the legs. So to give me a solid place to start the cut, I'm using a little CA glue to glue on some extra material at the start and end of the cut. This will give me something to make contact with the bearing on the router bit before starting the cut. This will reduce the chance of it catching the end grain and tearing up the workpiece or having it kick back. I refined the curve at the spindle sander. Then to be sure no divots from the spindle sander would show up in the final workpiece, I did a final hand sanding with a flexible sanding strip to fair out the curve. A few dabs of CA glue to attach the fence to the jig, then I attached some riser blocks to add some clamps.
After the glue set up, I went back and reinforced the riser blocks with some screws from underneath so the force of the clamps would not break away the CA glue bond when engaged. When selecting the wood for the legs, I chose pieces so the grain would flow with the curve of the leg. I used my template to trace the shape and headed to the bandsaw to cut them out, being sure to leave the line. At the router table is when you can see the extra support from the glue blocks in action. I make contact with the bearing against the plywood block, then start the cut. There is very little risk of kickback or having a catch happen. The legs are going to be joined to the top with a notch cut into the legs. I set up a stop block on my miter gauge so the notches would be in the exact same place on each leg, and then cut them out with a dado stack size to the thickness of the top. Since the top is curved and the dado has a flat bottom, it created a small gap where they came together. To fix this, I chiseled out a concave shape similar to the curvature of the top on each leg. I did a little test fit to see how things were fitting up. The top fit really well, but when I installed the lower shelves, the sharper curve of Squidward's head left a gap on the shorter leg. So I marked out the location of the leg on the shelves and approximated how deep of a notch I needed to make. I used my Japanese pole saw to cut against the grain, then chiseled out the rest. I did a few test fits and adjustments with the chisel until I had a nice fit on all sides. I wanted a nice smooth round over on the front of the legs, so I used a standard round over bit in the router table. To do this safely, reducing a chance of catch or kickback, ruining me or the workpiece, I glued on some starter plywood blocks. Back at the router table, I used the starter blocks to safely start the cut against the bearing of the bit. I took several small passes, raising the bit between each pass until I had taken a full depth pass. A little whack from a good mallet and the plywood pieces get knocked right off. The stain left over from the glue will get cut off in the next step. At the miter saw, I trimmed off the tops of the legs to the decorative angle I had decided on earlier. In hindsight, this may have been safer to do at the table saw. The little off cut got sucked up into the miter saw. But of course, that little piece could have turned into a little bullet and kicked back off the table saw. I know, you hand tool only lovers are screaming at me right now. To put the final touches on the legs and blend the top into the sides, I hand sanded a small chamfer around the curved tip and along the sides. After a final test fit, I decided it would be easier to pre-finish the pieces before assembling them. I marked each leg location with a sharpie and covered the joint with tape so the finish would not interfere with the glue bond. Then I used a little denatured alcohol to remove the pencil lines and eased over the edge with a little hand sanding. I used a clear wipe on satin poly for the finish. I put four coats on before assembly and did a fifth touch up coat after assembly. After all the parts were finished, I removed the tape and prepped my clamps with some cushioning material so I would not mar the new finish and went to work assembling the table. Since I had nine joints over seven pieces to line up and clamp together, I used a slow setting epoxy. As usual, the band clamp was disappointing and I abandoned it by the end of the glue up.
Well, my kid wouldn't let me call it the Squidward Table because, well, she thought it was a dumb name. But I think it turned out pretty good. Thank you for making it to the end of the project. If you'd like to see my progress on the next project being built, please join me on Patreon. And as always, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when the next video is released.